Hi, good day. I'm Vida. Welcome to the weekly news roundup. Let's take a look at our top national and business news this week. Prime Minister Hun Sen set clemency deadline for former CNRP members to have their ban lifted. The Prasakon stresses European double standard in EBA handling. Labor Ministry reports strike and demonstration down last year when compared to 2017. The regional economic meeting in Simriv discusses expansions of markets. Flights from Manila to command next month via Philippine Airlines. City Hall announces free traffic law training courses for drivers with by hailing app drivers. Let's begin with our top national story this week. Prime Minister Hun Sen has warned that banned former opposition party members may only have until Khmer New Year next month in order to return to politics early. In a speech during a groundbreaking ceremony in Phnom Penh, Mr. Hun Sen said the door has been opened, but there's a limited time to take the offer. Mr. Hun Sen was referring to a request that each banned politicians must file with either him or Interior Minister So King. If approved, King Narodam Sehamani will then issue a royal pardon. So far, three people have been granted clemency, including Kung Kwam, his son Kung Bora, and Sim Sawani. A total of 118 CNRP politicians were banned from politics in November 2017 by the Supreme Court after the party was dissolved. Former opposition lawmaker U Chan Rod, who has not filed a request, said he wants to return to politics but does not want to be branded as a traitor by former CNRP leader Som Rang Si. Foreign Affairs Minister Prasukhan renewed criticisms of the European Union over the possible revocations of the kingdom, everything but arms threat status. In front of ambassador and diplomats who were attending a ministry conference, Mr. Sukhan said the EU is reluctant in taking actions against other Asian countries, such as Myanmar and Laos, over perceived human rights and democratic setbacks, and that the bloc is still willing to do business with one-party countries like Vietnam. He said the EU had implemented the ball standard when dealing with the Cambodian government. Cambodia's EBA status is currently under review as the government faces EU scrutiny. EU Trade Commission Cecilia Marstrom last month reiterated that the review does not mean the status would be revoked. The Labour Ministry has compiled an annual 2018 report showing strike and demonstrations involving government workers are down when compared to 2017. The report said government workers went on 47 strike last year, a 51.5% drop when compared to the previous year 97. It noted that among the 47, 6 involved road blockage, 1 involved violence, 35 involved government interventions, and 3 involved marches. Additionally, it said that there were only five demonstrations last year, a sharp drop when compared to the previous year. The Labor Ministry reported that labor conditions and the increase in minimum wage play a part in the drop. Pasina, president of the Collective Union of the Movement of Workers, said despite the drop, the government sector still faced challenges regarding labor conditions. He said that lingering issues include human rights violations, short-term contracts, and seniority indemnity distribution. Mr. Sina also said that the numbers are down because union law banned the rights of unions. He added that many unions are afraid of being accused of incitement by companies. Have you noticed the influx of rickshaws in the capital? More noticeable the way these rickshaws are driven. Good news for those drivers because City Hall is offering free training courses on traffic laws for drivers who work with ride hailing apps such as Crab and Pass App. Governor Kun Sreng said all drivers who operate rickshaws and tuk-tuks for tech companies are encouraged to get a license. He said that lessons are hosted by the Department of Public Works and Transportation and will run until May. Mr. Sreng noted that many of these drivers do not have a license and that they may obtain one after the training. He said that after May, authorities will begin to strictly enforce traffic laws. Over the last few years, ride hailing services have become popular in the capital, shaking up the market. Many customers prefer ride hailing apps over the often overpriced traditional tuk-tuks. Despite the popularity, many of these drivers are encouraged to know traffic laws. 
Louis Lavie, marketing manager for Pass App, said the company has encouraged all of its drivers to take the course. He said 50 to 60 drivers are sent per section for the training. And on to our top business story. Negotiator gather in Simriap for the 7th Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Intersectional Ministerial Meeting in order to have a deal on goods and services by the end of this year. Commerce Minister Pan Sorosa said the meeting focused on agreements with Australia, China, Japan, South Korea and New Zealand. Mr. Sorosa noted that once a deal is struck, the RCEP will encompass a bigger market than the one offered by the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement. He said that Cambodia aims to wrap up negotiations in November. Prime Minister Hun Sen presided the meeting and said Minister must find a win-win solution, look for a common ground and respect each member's country political will. Good news for those traveling between island nations of the Philippines and the Kingdom. Philippine Airline will next month open its Manila Phnom Penh route. Its Mandan voyage is to be held on April 2nd, connecting Phnom Penh with Manila Ninoy Aquino International Airport. Philippine Airlines President Jam Bautista said the new venture will bring in more tourists and boost trade between the two nations. The route will use Airbus A320 aircraft, which can seat 156 passengers. But Mr. Bautista said the company is considering upgrading to the more spacious A321. Ryan Oi, the airline's vice president of SAIL, said the flight will bring tourists from North America, noting that it will offer direct flights to the Philippines from New York, Toronto, Los Angeles, Vancouver, and Honolulu. This is all for this week. Join us again for another edition of the Weekly News Roundup. I'm Vida. Have a good weekend.